the assortment of vigors and weapons in Bioshock Infinite ensure that there are always at least a few different ways to handle any situation. But there's one weapon that isn't really meant to be the main method of attack. Can you beat Bioshock Infinite with only a skyhook? I awoke in a boat with a gentleman and a lady discussing rowing. I had a sinking feeling unrelated to the boat filling with water that they were actually talking about something other than rowing, but I couldn't prove it. They left, I stood in the rain for a while to see if they would ever fully disappear from view. They didn't, and I entered the lighthouse. Inside, I found someone who had quite clearly killed themselves and rang a few bells. For a second, I thought that someone, somewhere, had activated a failsafe. Then I took a seat on my cushioned chariot and descended into the sky. I took my time wandering around the church I arrived in, thinking for a while about what a pain in the ass it must be to keep all these candles lit. Went down some stairs and found more candles. The good news is that I can actually put a few of them out. The fewer fire hazards, the better. Before I could get into the city proper, I had to be baptized. I did try to skirt my way around the priest, but I couldn't. The thing that shocked me about this scene was that it seemed like the water only went up to his ankles. Unless I've got a head like a pancake, I don't see how I could have almost been drowned in this water. During my blackout, I got a glimpse at a city being destroyed, woke for the second time in the last 16 minutes, and was finally in Colombia. This bird looks like shit by the way. This game, even though I'm playing it as part of the Bioshock collection, still looks great. While some games from 2013 have aged like a block of cheese sealed in a mason jar, this game is not one of them. I pressed onward, deeper into the city, saw a pretty electric pony, got a quick Columbia history lesson, saw another hummingbird that seemed enamored by the music, which made this entire city feel like one of those wholesome Disney cartoons from the early 40s. You know, the ones that were shockingly racist. I'm gonna skip through a lot of this early game stuff because it's just walking, looking, and listening for a while. The key takeaways are the demonic jugglers, the handyman, my first vigor, a sneak peek at my future weapon, the false shepherd badge of honor, and the raffle itself, I shoved someone's face into a police officer's weapon, supposedly. I think we can all agree that he did that to himself, he should have complied with my commands. And I finally got my first weapon. With this being the introductory combat portion of the game, the officers sent to kill me weren't all that difficult to kill. More combat later, and I got my hands on a gun that I can't use. The annoying part about the skyhook is that Booker DeWitt is a miracle of modern science in that he can have a firearm in one hand, a vigor active in the other, and a skyhook in the other. If you're thinking that the math makes no sense, I'd agree with you. In a perfect scenario, this would be like the first Bioshock, where I can eliminate the temptation of using firearms and the possibility of an accidental discharge by having the skyhook out as my primary weapon. But that can't happen, so if I can't get rid of the gun, I'll just get rid of the bullets. The rule is that I can't kill anyone with anything other than the skyhook. Not that I can't fire all my bullets into the wall to waste them. That was the general idea for most of this playthrough, but I'll go ahead and mention now that there were times when I didn't empty the clip or magazine, who cares, because of a combat situation or a general lack of awareness. With the pistol magazine somewhat empty, I continued to make my way towards the statue in the sky to rescue the princess. It was here things got challenging. There were a lot of cops, and they were doing more damage to me than I seemed to remember them doing in previous playthroughs, resulting in me dying several times. Then, there was the fireman, who did a metric fuckton of damage. And of course, all the tomatoes were just for show. Eventually, the fireman died. My fingers looked like matchsticks that had been left to burn after lighting a candle, and I kept heading towards Monument Island. It was here, things got far more difficult than they had any right to be. The automated turret is a motherfucker in terms of both damage and accuracy. Taking damage from bullets also slows me down just the tiniest of tiny amounts, which was more annoying than anything else. I tried to just outrun it, but it did too much damage too quickly. After some trial and error, I realized that the only enemy left was the turret, which meant I could use Possess to get it to stop attacking me without having to worry about it attacking anything else. I entered the Blue Ribbon Restaurant and made another dimension-shattering discovery. Gear. Pieces of gear are items that can be equipped to provide a buff of some sort. Four can be active at any given time, and I've got more than a few to choose from. Here's a rundown on what I chose. My hat is Electric Punch, which gives all melee attacks a 75% chance to stun an enemy for four seconds. My vest, or shirt, is Sugar Rush, which makes movement speed 50% faster for three seconds after eating a snack. My pants are Bull Rush, which makes melee attacks knock back enemies. And my shoes are Fleet Feet, which increases movement speed when evading. 
I thought for a while about whether or not I should use these effects. After all, stunning an enemy 75% of the time while also knocking them back makes the skyhook stupid powerful. But as far as I'm concerned, this is no different than enchanting a wooden sword in Skyrim that absorbs almost 18 million health from an enemy. In addition to all the gear available, there's also a few infusions that can be used to upgrade your max health, shield capacity, or salt capacity. In retrospect, since your shields automatically recharge, it would have been smart to just go all in on shield infusions from the very beginning. But I didn't. In fact, I put most of them into health for some ungodly reason. I then got my first taste of aerial combat with the skyhooks, found a machine gun and promptly fired all the bullets down into the earth, and could finally figure out how useful all this gear would be. They're about as good as I expected them to be, which is borderline overpowered. Even if an enemy is tough, and can take 3 or 4 hits to kill, all I need is one to get them on the ground. Then they're no longer a threat to me. I did die in this section though, because I underestimated the turret's potency despite my prior experience with them. Inside a building, the skyhook's potential really shined through as I beat several police officers to death in a confined space. Then, for whatever reason, I thought to check the difficulty. Turns out, in an unsurprising twist, I'd set it to hard. Not easy, because of course I did. I claimed that I was from Michigan, not that I'm smart. With the difficulty now set to easy, all foes would be considered a joke. More so than they already were. Just as an example, a fireman gave me some trouble earlier. But I did more damage to my hand from how hard I was hitting him than the prick did to me. One whack, lots of screaming, a few more whacks, then silence. Give me an alcoholic wife and two dead children, and I'd be living the American dream. Even a turret, which was the bane of my existence several minutes ago, was now a complete nothing bird herder of a foe now. I kept making my way towards Monument Island, killed a few clansmen inside a frat house, watched this lucky guy get pecked to death by a few parakeets, and came face to face with the Zealot of the Lady. The Zealot can be a tricky enemy to deal with normally. They teleport around and do a not insignificant amount of damage when they attack, but the Skyhook knocks the bitch out in one hit. Once they're on the ground, they're the same as any other enemy. Death is all but guaranteed. I finally got to Monument Island, well, the gateway anyway. There were lots of cops in this place. With this many idiots all trying to beat me to death, the ideal strategy is to just close your eyes and start swinging randomly in all directions. If all goes well, they'll all be dead. After leaving that building, I used the skylines to get closer to Monument Island, fighting through cops and police all the way there until I reached the base of the building. At which time, Comstock ordered them all to stand down. But I know a trap when I see one, which is why I beat them all to death, and not just the ones outside. I killed those inside the building as well. The sad part is that Comcast didn't seem to care about all the people I just killed. I then boarded his zeppelin, killed some guys, tried to kill this raggedy bitch, failed, Comstock revealed himself rather briefly, the bitch exploded, and I left the zeppelin. But all is not lost, as I'm now at Monument Tower. Inside Monument Tower, I found a picture that fascinated me far more than it should have. I passed by the electric speaker room, pushed my third favorite kind of button, and slowly ascended the tower while watching Elizabeth like some kind of sick freak. I fell through the roof, Elizabeth threw portable paper at me, she showed me that her preferred Monopoly piece is the thimble, the big bird arrived to see what was causing a ruckus, and we ran for our lives to escape the tower. She ran, I leisurely walked. My attempts at soothing the bird with a few heavy bonks on the nose failed miserably. The tower collapsed, and I caught myself on a sky rail. All sorts of things were going wrong as I rode the rail to safety. I awoke for the third time in Battleship Bay, passed out again, then woke up for the fourth time after having been saved by Elizabeth. And for the first time, but certainly not the last time, my objective was to find Elizabeth. Two children were playing dangerously close to the edge of the world, and I'd hoped to push them over the edge to their death. But just like how I wanted to play with these balls, my hopes and dreams don't really matter. I found Elizabeth, the first lady airship arrived, I picked the cage pin, I got a worthless gift from the folks I'd saved at the raffle all those minutes ago, and arrived at Charles E. Cheddar's Carnival Funland in Puppet Emporium. This mustachioed gentleman got upset when I touched his bell, so he stabbed me in the hand, which resulted in a series of unpleasant events getting kicked off and me killing everyone in the room. Elizabeth seemed less than impressed by my ruthless murder spree. She's also exceptionally weak. She couldn't even pull this lever with both hands while I effortlessly did it with one hand. I'm not sure why this was what I found to be weird out of everything I've encountered so far. We continued our search for the First Lady airship by passing through Soldier's Field. Even the fake mechanical children can't be hurt. I knew this game was a joke. 
This freak was trying to sell communist propaganda to children, so you know I had to kill him. The few cops in the area didn't like that. Not that their opinions matter, since they're dead now. To get to the airship, I needed to fulfill my destiny and become Electro Lad. Shock Jockey is somewhere in the Hall of Heroes, which would explain why Songbird seemed to know exactly where to go to find us. I got the distance Donkey Vigor was confronted by what seemed like a dozen police officers who died just trying to do their job, and was one courtyard away from entering the Hall of Heroes. Here I encountered what I thought could be the end of the run, a rooftop sniper. There's no way to get up to where he is to kill him, and the maximum effective range of the skyhook is about one arm's length. I ran around for a bit until I thought to just ignore him, which worked, and I entered the Hall of Heroes to find Slate in Shock Jockey. This segment of the game is one of many that shows how powerful the propaganda Comstock pushes really is on the common folk. He presented himself as a wartime hero who saved the day, but he really wasn't. Slate sent a bunch of men after me, none of which were really anything crazy. In fact, I'd go so far as to say that you'd find more resistance in crushing a baby's head in your hands before its skull hardens than you would killing these low-level goons. I waited for what felt like minutes while Elizabeth just stood there in front of a door instead of unlocking it like a good little lackey. There was another courtyard full of Slate's men, which I used to get the aerial assassin trophy, pushed inside the First Lady Memorial, and fought a patriot for the first time. More so than the bird people and the firemen, the motorized patriot is supposed to be a tough enemy to deal with. They're definitely the hardest thing to kill I've encountered so far, but they're still not all that difficult. More time consuming than anything else. They can still be stunned with the skyhook just like any other enemy. Maybe 10 whacks and they're down for the count. Slate sent everything he could muster to stop me, which didn't work because it was more about giving his men a soldier's death than it was actually stopping me. I'm the protagonist, I don't die. Slate begged me to kill him, but I couldn't because the pistol he gave me isn't a skyhook. Elizabeth was proud that I spared him. Then I beat him to death. With Shock Jockey coursing through my fingers, I could return to Soldier's Field to power up the gondola. Comstock's goons came to stop me from reaching the gondola, but as previously described, they did not succeed. I rode the gondola, killed more innocent people, and boarded the First Lady airship. Elizabeth caught wind of my plans to sell her organs for drug money and promptly bashed me in the skull with a wrench. When I woke up, I was standing on the precipice of a few broken bones probably. Finally got the chance to see how snow was made. Daisy decided for me that I was going to help her. Then this asshole pushed me off the airship and I somehow didn't break my back. My objective is the same as it is about 90% of the time. Find Elizabeth. I killed the guys cleaning the floors because I had some internal things to work out. I almost caught Elizabeth, she blocked my way with imaginary confetti and a marching band, then the Chaco Mountain train, and went and got herself arrested. I had almost rescued her when I got attacked by one of the best ultimate frisbee players in the world, also known as a handyman. With Elizabeth thinking that she'd still see Paris one day, we were off to Finkton to find a gunsmith. More hooligans tried to stop us, Elizabeth read from her diary, and Jeremiah Fink introduced himself to me. Turns out that, according to Maylin, the gunsmith was taken by the flying squad. God, that name rubs me the wrong way. We went to the Good Time Club. I thought for a moment that maybe the stars would align and I'd be able to buy a skyhook upgrade of some sort. Obviously, that was not the case. I killed seven people at speeds that would make Stalin jealous. Fink sent a birdman after me, as if that's supposed to be any kind of a challenge. And then things got stupid difficult. He sent automated nonsense to kill me. The two ground turrets were annoying, but they were not the real problem. The real issue here is the three airborne turrets. I'm sure you can figure out why multiple turrets that float 15 feet off the ground would be troublesome to deal with when your only method of attack is a melee weapon. I spent several minutes running around, bashing my head on various things, hoping to cause a brain injury traumatic enough to kill me. After I didn't die, I came up with the next best option. Two of the turrets come out from behind a curtain, meaning I can destroy them as soon as they appear. The ugly duckling is all that remains. The first time I leaped off the balcony, it became clear that constantly breaking my legs would be a viable option. All I needed to do was successfully jump off the balcony and whack the turret maybe three times. It took a bit of effort, but I eventually did it, and the worst part of this challenge is now behind me. I pressed onward and arrived at the jail where the gunsmith was being held. I'll be honest, I wasn't paying attention to what was being said during this part of the story. I killed Slate for the second time. I'm not sure exactly how that happened, but I'm not going to question it. Took Elizabeth down to the good time basement and found the gunsmith, who appears to have had a bit of an accident. Alzheimer's sure is scary. 
The Lutices were back and made vague statements about science mumbo jumbo. Elizabeth opened up her tear and we pressed into the new dimension together. There were more prisoners in the prison in this new world and I killed as many of them as I could. The gunsmith was back but we were too late. The Alzheimer's had already started kicking his ass. The fetch quests never end though as we were now going to Shantytown to find his tools. Of all the universes we could have jumped to, we had to go to the one without a Home Depot. How people built buildings without the quality and affordable tools Home Depot offers is a hell of a mystery. In the shantiest of towns, Elizabeth used her console commands to spawn some fake fruit for the common folk, who I immediately started beating to death. I killed most of the people in the shanty town on the way to the police impound. And this is where things got weird, because no challenge is complete without the game fucking itself to death. There are cops and soldiers and stuff that needed to die, but when I land on the platform and whack them, I glitch through the floor and am seduced by the void. Then I land and things break again. This happened several times, and I'm not exactly sure why. It's a real problem, but it's not the main problem. The turret issue reared its cunting head again, only this time it's with rocket turrets instead of machine gun turrets with balloons. There is no way to reach those turrets. They're too far out and too high to hit with the skyhook, but the floor breaks when I land on it, so running and jumping at the turrets isn't an option to begin with. Unfortunately, this is the end of the line. The door can't be opened while in combat, combat can't be ended while the turrets exist, and the turrets can't be wiped from this dimension with only a skyhook. So to answer the titular question, no, you cannot beat Bioshock Infinite with only a skyhook. But this is just a minor setback, I'm not gonna let this stop me. I had Elizabeth repeatedly open tears that spawned turrets that fight on my behalf to destroy the rocket turrets. I didn't destroy them with the skyhook, but I also didn't destroy them with any of my weapons or vigors. This seemed like the only logical way to proceed. With them dealt with, I could get inside the police impound building, kill the police inside, find the gunsmith's tools, and hop into yet another new dimension. This time, one where the tools were already back at the gunsmith's shop. Because who cares about supporting your local branch of the US Postal Service? In this new timeline, I'm a hero to the Vox Populi. But unlike a game like Call of Duty, there is no penalty for killing your friends. So I killed both friend and foe alike until I arrived back at the gunsmith's building where, thank god, he's dead again. Now that that problem had resolved itself, I could get back to what mattered, finding and securing the first lady airship. Daisy Fitzroy had other ideas. I knew she was a ghost hunter at heart, because she's not thrilled about me supposedly being back from the dead. She pulled a Mr. Dink, killed Jeremiah Fink, and covered herself in his liquid stink. The Vox Populi gang did everything in their power to stop me from reaching Daisy. The common folk were easy to kill. The only things that posed a real threat were the handymen and patriots. Mostly the handymen, which makes sense, as they're essentially the big daddies of Bioshock Infinite. Daisy put a gun to the Fink boy's head, which Elizabeth didn't appreciate. I guess Elizabeth is one of those people who thinks children's lives are actually worth something. The boy lived, I got my airship back, Songbird attacked, and the airship was already destroyed. That feathered fuck always ruins everything. This is the beginning of the end, as Comstock House is where we're headed. There were some innocent bystanders trying to get onto a gondola to probably escape Columbia. I made sure they succeeded, just not in the way they were expecting. This area has more heavily armored Vox Populi soldiers than previously encountered, what with the new dimension and whatnot. But once they're on the ground, they're more or less the same as anyone else. Inside Port Prosperity, I found half a dozen scalps belonging to people who were stupid enough to get a haircut at Supercuts, went back outside, killed a patriot, knocked a guy down into oblivion, and took the gondola to Comstock House. There were more soldiers and patriots inside, nothing too noteworthy though. The bigger issue here wasn't the enemies, but my incredibly smooth brain. There are two snipers perched on their own platforms. I couldn't reach them with a skyhook from the ground, and there was no way to get up there. I spent several minutes wandering around aimlessly, taking the occasional swing at the snipers to no avail. Then it hit me that I'd been completely oblivious to the freight hook tear that could be opened up, which allowed me to brutally beat the snipers into a bloody pulp, walk through the turnstile, search for a key, and once again suffer the wrath of Big Bird. There were a lot of tough cookies waiting for me on the way to downtown Emporia. The handyman was, as usual, the most precarious foe to contend with, especially since he can shock the skylines. The stun attacks also aren't nearly as effective on him as they are on everything else. 
Nevertheless, the area was cleared. I passed through Sniper's Alley, arrived in downtown Emporia, and Elizabeth made it clear that we couldn't get inside Comstock House until we dug up and did unspeakable things to her mother's long since rotted corpse. Turns out that she's not a corpse, she's a ghost. Daisy Fitzroy was right all along. Lady Comstock was a real bitch to deal with, primarily because she used her unholy powers for evil by raising the dead to attack me. The dead aren't much of a threat on their own, but when they're endlessly spawning and attack in large numbers, they can do a lot of damage in a short amount of time. Lady Comstock is also tough as nails, far tougher than a handyman. After she was defeated, the Lutises arrived to do some landscaping, and Elizabeth and I were off to fuck the ghost to death three more times. The actual objective was to find the three tears, but I can read between the lines. Nothing all that interesting happened during this little adventure in backtracking. After finding the third tear, the ghost of Lady Comstock revealed herself again. I killed her again and all the dead she'd spawned, and we returned to Comstock House's gate, where there were more Vox Populi lying in wait. Lady Comstock proved to be a resourceful old bird by again raising the dead to fight for her. This time around, I largely ignored the dead and focused on whacking the lady herself. For the last time, she was beaten to death. She blasted the gate open for us before returning to her coffin, and we were finally on the path to Comstock House. Songbird ruins everything though, because he showed up and pulled the Shawn Michaels by chucking me through a window. His clawed fist was mere inches away from penetrating my skull when Elizabeth finally returned the favor by saving my life for once. She is gone, but I'm alive, and that's all that matters. For the 1000th time, my objective is to find Elizabeth. She is apparently some sort of a religious icon now. I tried to kill this boy of silence, which didn't work because after all the head injuries I've gotten, he might not have even existed in the first place. His scream summoned a horde of masked minions to make mincemeat out of me. I avoided the bellboys in future encounters, got to the warden's office, and was ready to rescue Elizabeth. On my way to the operating theater, I took the hand of Elizabeth and was pulled into another dimension where I got a glimpse of the salvation to come. I waited for a while, because how often do you get to see New York being glassed by blimps outside of a Marvel movie? I found Elizabeth, who looked like she was experiencing something a bit unpleasant. Between her flailing around and screaming, turn it off, turn it off, it hurts, it hurts, to the tune of Santa's coming tonight tonight, I just had a feeling she wasn't exactly having fun in there. The fighting en route to rescue her was surprisingly more difficult than I thought it'd be. I died a few times there, most likely due to the two turrets and the assortment of heavily armored soldiers with their fancy firearms. I shut off the power, ripped the sucker out of her spinal column, and she summoned a fucking tornado to threaten me with. We left the operating theater via an elevator that had a button that I got to push. Elizabeth picked a lock because there was no way between her interdimensional powers and my military grade arsenal of weaponry that we could ever hope to get through this glass door. I killed a few people and took a gondola up to the hand of the Prophet's gunship. Then, for the third time, turrets arrived to fuck this idea to death. The problem is the same as it was the first time. There are two airborne turrets that I can't reach. I tried running and jumping at them, but they're too high and too far out. Plus, being shot staggers my movement a bit, which wasn't doing me any favors. I tried to get on top of a gondola, but it's blocked by an invisible wall. There was nothing I could do. Luckily, money has been practically worthless throughout this entire run, and the only penalty for dying is losing some cash. So I sat there for quite a while, dying over and over and over again. It takes about 40 seconds to be shredded by the bullets enough to stop my heart, get revived by Elizabeth, and do it all over again. I stood there for a solid 25 minutes, so I reckon I died at least 50 times. Part of me wanted to see if I could wait it out and eventually arrive at the gunship, and the other part of me was waiting for a phone call to let me know that my dog had been put to sleep. Bioshock wasn't my top priority at that particular moment. Back in the game, I still hadn't come up with any acceptable ideas for dealing with the turrets, so I did the only thing I could think of. I used the possession vigor on one of the turrets to get it to destroy the other, leaving it out of my side and allowing me to finally progress to the gunship. The end is near which means Comstock's throwing everything he can at us. Turrets, soldiers, clowns in devil hats, patriots, everything. After several minutes of non-stop whacking, we made it to the interior of the gunship. There were a whole bunch of mean people to face, including a handyman, before ascending the final time and confronting Zachary Comstock. He grabbed Elizabeth, and I really thought she had it under control, but after watching for a while, it became clear that she didn't. So, in a glorified cutscene that doesn't really count, I bashed Comstock's head against the birdbath and drowned him in it. 
I almost did something horrible before I realized how messy it would be, went to the control room, set a course for somewhere, and were attacked by what remained of the Vox Populi, which was a small army's worth of people. Elizabeth summoned the giant bird he took to the skies because, you know, he's a bird, and the final battle began. Pretty much everything I've said about combat situations applies here. The soldiers aren't all that difficult to kill. The heavy hitters like the Patriots, Missile Guys, and Bird People have the potential to be challenging, but really aren't. To be perfectly honest, this was not all that difficult. You just have to pay attention to your health and use the skylines to escape to let your shield recharge. The large zeppelins can only be destroyed by the Songbird. I'm sure there were people on board that were killed when the bird attacked, so you could probably count them against me but I've already failed this run thanks to those airborne turrets from earlier, so it doesn't really matter at this point. I took the neat whistle and used it to direct Songbird to destroy Monument Tower, where Elizabeth was once held. The bird then gained sentience and developed free will, with his first choice being to come after me. Elizabeth saved the day by teleporting all three of us down to the bottom of the ocean. It was dumb luck that she managed to get the Songbird in the water while we were safely behind the glass of rapture. And if there's one thing that won't crack, under even the most extreme of circumstances, it's glass. I spent about as much time as I could exploring Rapture. We rode a bathy sphere back up to the surface, and the infinite universe's dimensional looping thing got crazy. This is somewhat convoluted, but the gist of it is that Booker DeWitt is, or becomes, Comstock in the timelines where he's baptized after the Battle of Wounded Knee. The only way to stop all the suffering Comstock caused was to kill him, Booker, before he ever has the chance to become Comstock. I'm pushed under the water, it flows into my lungs, I run out of air, black out, eventually die, and did not beat Bioshock Infinite with only the Skyhook. And that's going to do it for this video about whether or not you can beat Bioshock Infinite with only the Skyhook. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Join the Mitten Squad Discord server through a link in the video description. Follow me on Twitter, at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.